human beings have this, what, what we call the, the human loop or the emotional loop, where human beings, we're really meant to be in, in a society where, where we have a lot of people caring about us, where we have a lot, you know, where they say it takes a village to raise a child. I think that's really true. We need a lot of people in our support group, so to, say, so to speak. And, and so if adopted people would reach out to someone else when they're feeling bad about something, but that someone else has to be someone who understands what they're, they're trying to say and try to, trying to explain. Because adoptees will say, if I tell somebody who's not adopted what I'm feeling right now, they will just, they'll give me a lecture or they'll tell me I shouldn't feel that way. I don't think you need to ever tell anybody they shouldn't feel what they're feeling. Things, um, one of the things I'd like to say about birthdays is that a lot of times, I mean, if, if a child was separated from the mother on the day they were born, that's usually a pretty sad day for them. And they often don't like their birthdays very much. Um, they'll look forward to it. They'll be very excited about the birthday party. But if you have the birthday party on their birthday, they might go hide under the bed instead of doing what you know you think that they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of and, uh, and adoptees that are in their you know adults will say, it really makes me mad when my friends want to celebrate my birthday, and they don't know why, you know. And so when they figure out why, then it makes sense to them. Well, that's the day that I was left by my mom. And so it becomes a sad day rather than a happy day. And so what I would suggest is you just have a birthday party some other time, you know, either before the birthday or a couple weeks after. Um, if, if, if your child <coughs> seems to react that way, some of them just get sick. They have stomach aches. That's another thing. And I used to give talks to, <coughs> to um, pediatricians in hospitals at Grand Rounds, you know, where they have at 8 o'clock in the morning we go and talk about things. Um, <clears throat> several of us would go and talk about adoption because pediatricians don't have a clue about what's going on with some of these kids that they see who have stomach problems, headaches, rashes, all kinds of things, and they can't find any physical reason for them. So when we talk about anxiety and how anxiety plays out with these kids, they begin to understand that some of these things are coming from their anxiety of not knowing if these parents are going to keep them or not. You know, I mean, that anxiety is kind of with them all the time. It goes on to when they go into a relationship, in a real romantic relationship. They're just as scared. They're just as scared about that person. And, you know, and some of the behavior that comes from that is, is something that's going to make the person say, you know, what is this anyway? And I don't know how to deal with it. So, it's, it's very important to understand how impactful those experiences are. Um, <clears throat> so celebrate birthdays on another day if you can. You know, you can notice if your child doesn't have any problem with the birthday, then that's fine. And, and some of the kids that were separated on a different day or some other time, like these kids that come from foster care, um, some of them won't have that same kind of reaction. But just be kind of alert to what, what's going on with your child on their birthday. Um, also, being late, picking your kid up. This is another thing that adoptees, you know, all the other kids will say, mom's late, okay, let's go play on the bars, or let's do something. Adopted kids are really afraid that she's not coming back. And so it's really important to be on time for your kids because they don't have that same, okay, it doesn't matter kind of feeling about mom being late for things. And even if you come every time, even if you're five minutes late and you come five minutes late every time and the child knows you're there or knows you come every time, somehow this may be the time you're not going to come. So it's really important to, to, to kind of know these things so that you can deal with them ahead of time. Um, You know, one of the things, one of the things I, I suggest not doing, and this is for ad adopted and birth parents, and you're, if you're talking to an adopted person, don't ask them why they did this, or why they feel that way, or why they said what they said. Because what does it happen? If, if you say, if somebody asks you, well, why did you do that? Or why, did, why do you think that? What does that do? It puts you on the defensive right away, right? So what you, what you might want to do instead is just say something, well, that's a really interesting idea. 
can you tell me more about that? You want to open up the, the discussion so that they'll feel free to tell you about it, so they'll trust you enough to tell you about what it is that's really going on. You know, I mean, oftentimes we, we discount our kids' feelings by saying, oh, I'm sure she didn't really mean that. But, okay, maybe she didn't, but it affected your child. You need to talk to how it affected your child. That must have hurt your feelings. And maybe we can talk to her about it or something. You know, you can come up with a solution after you validate the feeling. But they just want to be understood. Everywhere I go in the world and talk about adoption, adopted kids want their adopted parents to understand their pain and their loss. They want them to understand their feelings. That's really important. And so, you know, any way you can demonstrate that to them is, is a good thing. Now, you know, as I, as I mentioned before, it's important to know the difference between uh, between the behavior and the personality of your child because it's so easy to think that behavior is personality. Um, in fact, a lot of people will say that that behavior is personality. That's, that's just his personality. Well, behavior is more a response to experiences we have in our lives. So behavior isn't necessarily personality. And I've seen people change so much in the way they behave in life when they finally find that authentic personality, that authentic person within themselves. They don't have to be so guarded. They don't have to be acting out all over the place. They don't have to push people away anymore, you know, because they have come to accept and love themselves. Um, oh, uh, another thing has to do with, you know, the talents that kids have. Um, I was in Australia one time and this kid was telling me, at least, he was telling me that he was just starting to take piano lessons. And I said, oh gosh, you know, you didn't take piano lessons when you were a kid, huh? And he said, no, no, my parents didn't care about music. My kid, they didn't care anything about music. And so I just never got piano lessons. So this is another thing that adopted parents have to know. You know, kids may have talents that you don't even know about, that you don't have anything to do with, or that you can't, you know, my, my daughter's very good at art. I'm not good at art at all. But she did go to art school because I knew that that was what she liked to do, and that's what she, not that she does that today, but how many of us do?